and there are other people come in and they do work, extra work on the weekends. And there are two or three people who come in and they work on the light show. Now these people are all, so if anybody can call that down, I, I can't see their reasoning. Probably the first psychedelic song was Puff the Magic Dragon, which we heard was an allegory for smoking marijuana. Lately, the charts have been dominated by psychedelic songs, and we've asked many of the stars what they uh, thought. The only form of art I can see that it could be called is distortion, because jazz is abstract and pop is more or less realistic. When we spoke to the Everly Brothers, we asked them if they thought drug or acid theme should really enter into the lyrics of songs, and if they owed the public any responsibility in this regard being honest with myself first of all you know I, I'm not trying to preach or, or be uh, you know uh, change the world really I am not that uh, strong in my complete belief but I don't believe in drugs well let um, me let me put an example to you then an entertainer who maybe does use drugs or, or take uh, something that has a this effect uh, do you think he has a responsibility not to say things about it or not to try and well, create I think the impression that, that it's it'll good. wind up uh, sure he'll wind up going to jail they'll hear about it if they want to you know they, that's the example i think you have a responsibility though you have a personal responsibility to do what uh, you think but uh, as it's gone now you can sing uh, something today and uh, it'll be misconstrued anyhow and i think that's what the uh, one of the main reasons for that is the publicity that uh, the psychedelic has gotten with from uh, magazines and uh, you know, books and things that people are reading, you know, articles. But I think this is that people look for it in qu very quickly in a lyric of a song. They, they look for something that they can say, yeah, this is something weird, you know. Uh, very interesting comments indeed, and thank you both very much. Thank, thank you, you very much. Uh, I think that it's wrong that you should advocate drugs, because I think you do owe a certain amount of responsibility to the audience. So you do have some influence over a certain age group. <clears throat> I think if you know you have an influence over a certain age group, I think you'd be a hypocrite not to tell them what you felt. I agree with that. But the only thing is, uh, it depends on how much influence you have with the young, because I think the leaders of today's young people, of course, are basically the musicians and the entertainers, especially if you look at the Beatles, almost everything the Beatles do is picked up by the young people. Uh, and they have such a terrific responsibility to really lead the young people of today. And I think the Beatles, of course, think about that a lot in all the moves that they make. Um, the drug scene is a uh, very touchy scene, and it can't be taken with an off-the-cuff approach because there's so much involved in it. And I think uh, when the Beatles or Donovan or Eric Burden or whoever it may be uh, advocates or doesn't advocate the use of drugs, I think they think about it a lot before they even make a, make a move. Um, I like all kinds of pop music, and for that matter, just about all kinds of music, but uh, the psychedelic stuff, which is so creative and inventive and using different sounds and different techniques, uh, sometimes different rhythm and melody patterns is great. It's inventive and, and it's fresh. I like it. The only thing I don't like uh, are a lot of the lyrics because I think it's uh, definitely wrong and really deplorable to, for our young people to hear glorified on the air uh, things like LSD and, and marijuana, uh, taking trips, love-ins. Um, uh, one of the Rolling Stones records said something about uh, let's spend the night together. I didn't know this was going on. As long as you keep disciplined, it is all right. I think it's all right. I like it. Oh, I think it's revolving. Hi, I'm Bill Good Jr., and the comments you've just heard were taped at Vancouver's 1967 Human Being.